A cold wave kept the nation's Midwest and Northeast in the deep freeze today. Wind chill warnings and advisories stretch from North Dakota to New Hampshire as Arctic winds dropped temperatures to 37 below zero in some places. Officials warned of the risk of frostbite with less than 30 minutes of exposure and they went on alert. Anytime that we have an extreme in weather, be it cold or hot, it, uh, it, it taxes the EMS system as a whole. Look for people who may need assistance maybe before they're so bad off that they, they require an ambulance to go to the hospital and they'll get them services like a shelter or a detox or things like that. As the cold set in, Erie, Pennsylvania declared a state of emergency with a record 65 inches of snow. More snow was falling today. In Syria, critically ill patients are finally being evacuated from a rebel-held area near Damascus. Hundreds of sick people in eastern Gota have been unable to get treatment at area hospitals, but now government troops are letting aid groups evacuate nearly 30 critically ill patients. In return, the rebels want a like number of captive fighters released. Also today, Russia declared the main battle with the Islamic State in Syria is now over. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said the Syrian army and its allies must turn their focus to hunting down the Nusra Front Group linked to al-Qaeda. Russian leader Vladimir Putin has officially registered to run for his fourth term as president. In Moscow today, Putin handed in his papers in person to the nation's election commission. Early polls show he's likely to be reelected in the March vote. Opposition leader Alexei Navalny is urging a boycott of the election after he was banned from running. Today, he called for nationwide protests next month. Let's come out to the street for yourselves, for your rights, for your future, for the fact that we do not want to lose another six years. We will start a big campaign on one hand to persuade everyone to participate in the boycott and not to take part in the election, and on the other hand, to count how many people really come to the polling stations and not let Putin fabricate that number. Putin is 65 years old and has already led Russia as prime minister and now president for a total of 18 years. Former President Obama is urging leaders to be careful in their online statements. He spoke with Britain's Prince Harry in an interview that aired today on the BBC. The former president did not directly mention President Trump, but he did voice concern about social media's effect on politics. All of us in leadership have to find ways in which we can recreate a common space on the Internet. Mm -hmm. One of the, the dangers of the Internet is, is that people can have entirely different realities. They can be just cocooned in yep. information that re reinforces their current biases. Mr. Obama also said he considers the Affordable Care Act, widely known as Obamacare, one of his greatest achievements. The Library of Congress says it will no longer archive every public tweet, including the president's. Instead, starting in the new year, it will be more selective. The library cites the growing volume in tweets and the increase in characters from 140 to 280. The National Archives keeps all presidential tweets and will continue to do so. And on Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 28 points to close at 24,774. The Nasdaq rose three points, and the S&P 500 added two.